politics and power. We have made repeated reference of democracy and we shall continue to so on this series of programs because democracy essentially is the major governing type under our review. But it is the most easily misunderstood concept and also the most widely abused. Arand Laipat is an authority on democracy and on today's program we will read a bit from his work entitled Patterns of Democracy. On page 46 and I quote, Although political scientists have disagreed on some of the details of defining and measuring democracy, the eight criteria proposed by Robert Dahl in his seminal book, Polyarchy, still command widespread support. Number one, the right to vote, the right to be elected, the right of political leaders to compete for support and votes, elections that are free and fair, freedom of association, freedom of expression, alternative sources of information, and institutions for making public policies depend on votes and other expressions of performance. These requirements, the offer continues, are already implied in Lincoln's simple definition of democracy as government by the people and for the people. For instance, by the people implies universal suffrage, eligibility for public office, and free and fair elections. Elections cannot be free and fair unless there is freedom of expression and association both before and between elections. Similarly, for the people implies Dahl's eighth criterion of responsiveness by the government to the voters' preferences. Nevertheless, it is instructive to spell out the specific criteria, especially for the purpose of deciding whether countries qualify as democracies and which countries do not. Unquote. You see, democracy is not what one wants it to be, but it is what it is. And there are authorities on the theory who have articulated in very clear details. And I again quote from Leipart on page 282 of his text where he writes that political equality is a basic goal of democracy and the degree of political equality is therefore an important indicator of democratic quality. Political equality is difficult to measure directly, but economic equality can serve as a valid proxy since political equality is more likely to prevail in the absence of great economic inequalities. Unquote. The writer goes on to say on page 263 that voter turnout is an excellent indicator of democratic quality for two reasons. First, it allows the extent to which citizens are actually interested in being represented. And secondly, turnout is strongly correlated with socioeconomic status and can therefore also serve as an indirect indicator of political equality. High turnout means more equal participation and hence greater political equality. Low turnout spells unequal participation and hence more inequality, unquote. So you see, democracy is a standard theory and it must be practiced in a standard way every time for it to be effective. Politics and power. Oh, <laughs>